what's up guys and welcome back to my channel and this is the long-awaited review video of the Gemini MDJ 900 unit and um, yeah I've had this player for nearly a year now 10 months and I can now give you my honest review and yeah at the end of the video I'm gonna tell you should you buy it or not but yeah anyways this Gemini player costs 400 bucks each I have two of them so it costed 800 bucks about 800 bucks together so uh, yeah this player is low budget player so uh, don't expect too much from it because like I said it's low budget controller and uh, yeah it it has its own issues you know but this player has many lots of uh, neg negative reviews but um they they're not all accurate you know in my opinion this is this is pretty pretty good you know of course it could be better but it's better than the reviews said so yeah let's turn this bad boy on this unit was released in 2017 if i remember right and um it haven't it haven't been updated since 2020 if i remember if i remember right version 6.10 been for four years now this is what it looks like all right all, all right now we'll just plug in the usb by the way um one of the issues one of the biggest issues this player has is that if you if you happen to own this unit you might know that um this crashes pretty pretty much but i have found a solution to that and well it's the link mode because these players doesn't work that well with link mode so you need to have two separate usb sticks if you wanna play without any issues so yeah i have many different folders i'm just gonna find a track hopefully my own here i'll turn my mixer on i have the reloop 60 reloop remix 60 here here is all the buttons you know well of course play button this is my song called concentration this is techno it has some kind of delay you know all the buttons has some kind of delay between them and one of the issues is that when I press hot Q you know it might actually skip a little further if I if I press like this hot Q number four sometimes it can actually jump one beat further yeah and before before everything you know here in the settings here are the sound card options i have currently the best option but so yeah if you yeah i don't know how to explain it but uh, the better the sound card is the less good the performance is going to be and smaller smaller sound card the better the performance will be but the sound will be a bit bad yeah <laughs> Yeah, so all the buttons has, has some kind of delay. So yeah, Q and button. And 
under this Q, if you press shift, here is the shift button, shift and Q, you can manually set the BPM beat grid. If the grid is, is somewhere else, you know, if it's not in on its position, you can just find the beat, press Q, then press shift and beat offset. And now it has changed the grid, you know, so it's easier for you to um, set the hot cues so it will be more accurate on beat. And yeah, and of course the loops. Just remember to have quantize, quantize on. But yeah, the hot cues works pretty decent. Of course you can press a shift, you can delete them, delete the hot cues. Then there is reverse button. Yeah, it also has some kind of delay. I'll quickly set the sound card to the worst one. Let's see what it sounds like. Actually, I don't, I don't see any changes, but anyways, that's the reverse, pressing shift and reverse. You can zoom in or zoom out the waveform. By the way, it doesn't save the zoom level when you, when you're loading, loading the track once again, or, and if you, yeah, it's not going to save the zoom you know then here is the track search the previous track or actually it's gonna teleport to the beginning now it's now it's going to the last track oh oh crap Okay, this has some kind of delay. I'll try to find the my track here. Here it is. Yeah, all right. So then here, here is the search buttons. Works okay. Then shift and this button selects the time you see right here it's gonna show you how much time how much of the track is left to play and pressing this again shows you how long the track track has have been played and then here is the text it's gonna show you what what artist it is what genre is it the file name and the artist you know any track name of course and um then here is the sync this uh only works with link option but i don't use the link option because like i said it, it's gonna have so much so much issues it doesn't it doesn't work well with the link mode i've tried you know it was <laughs> It was not fun to play uh, link mode with the link mode, but then I tried without the link mode and I had two USB sticks. It, it was more fun, you know, and it didn't have any issues. So yeah. Then here is the master, master, you know, I can't explain what it means, but if you're a DJ, then you might know. And here is the jog wheel adjust. The jog wheel has some kind of noise when spinning it, like it has that kind of sound. And the buttons, when I touch them, they are a bit wobbly. 
wobbly. The other player here, it has more worse. No, it actually doesn't. But what the frick? But if I have sticky fingers, that's the sound. That's the wobbly sound. Now I have sticky fingers because I licked them. Then, yeah, there. This is heavy. Uh, this actually, this speed adjust thing actually broke when I got this. You know, it's not that. It's it's not that heavy when it's at the heaviest setting. Uh, if I remember right, it broke like the first day I bought this. It broke, it doesn't, you know, break the wheel, it's not that heavy, like the other one, it's way more heavier, I can, I, I can, I can see it, I can feel it, that the other, other uh, unit's platter is heavier than the other, but it's not an issue, it's not an issue, it's not a big thing, I don't, I don't care, it's not that big, big of a thing. Yeah, so this chuck adjust is, you you know, you can set the adjust, you can spin the wheel and find the right position that you like when spinning the wheel. And if you want to do a backspin, you can just, yeah. And then here is the loop. Right here, I'll set the B. I'll set um, it has some kind of cut there, you know. You hear that cut? Hear that cut right there? Let's see if I change the settings. Can we hear them still? Oh, it. So yeah, if you uh, stop, if you stop the music, then it automatically leaves the loop. I don't know why. I don't know if I haven't tried if I can change change that from the settings. There's I can't see anything about about loop emergency loop, of course, but nothing else about loop. So yeah. Okay, so it depends on the. So yeah, I tried to change the. I changed the sound card, and it doesn't have that cut, you know. That's nice. The loop is pretty okay. I can trust each loop, you know. This is the out. It doesn't work that well. Oh yeah, of course shift and... I've never used this method, you know. Then reloop and exit the loop. Then pressing again will reloop. And loop roll. So this is the loop roll. Loop roll. You know it activates the sleep mode automatically, and then you can um, activate a loop, and it, the track will continue playing. Or actually, I, I have actually never used this loop roll in my life, so I don't know exactly what it does. But yeah, so I, I don't know how to explain. And of course, um, yeah, here is the auto, auto loops. So 2 bit, 4 bit, 8 bit, 16 bit, 
shift 18 14 12 and 1 beat and yeah so at the other side here is the vinyl break right here start vinyl start and vinyl stop it's a pretty good thing you know here here it so it's now full then yeah and here is the start I know this track is shit I, I know I was a beginner back then so yeah yeah then here is the filter this Gemini player has its own filter it doesn't have any resonance it's just a very clear clear filter but the resistance you know you can easily accidentally turn this knob and you don't actually realize and you don't actually hear that it's activated of course this says that the filter is on all the time so I, but in the mixer that I have it it has a light here when I it turns a light blue on blue light on you can see it but it's on it's on so I can so I I know that it's active the filter is activated yeah this is pretty uh, slippery easily to be turned this is what it sounds like I pass it doesn't cut it doesn't cut the it doesn't cut everything you know yeah and of course it's sleep button you can just do whatever you want and the track will continue at the point each yeah yeah you know what sleep mode is you can just do everything that's like the performance mode you can just do everything and the song will just continue playing yeah that's that's it then scratching i i don't know how to scratch i've i've never actually learned to scratch so first of all so yeah the every every button is pretty noisy you know yeah but it's not a problem to me and not a problem to many people all right guys this this player just crashed i i think so oh no it didn't oh no it didn't i don't know what just happened but yeah here's of course the nudge nudging you know what it does slowers the track so you can beat match it has this cool lead right here in the middle and here is the vinyl thing so you can see that you have the vinyl on the vinyl button is right here let me just all right I just set the camera to the right position so you can see more clearly like this yeah here's the vinyl, vinyl button and when you press shift 
and vinyl button it turns turns on and off the quantize quantize so yeah so if you don't know what quantize means it that means that um yeah if you press hot Q, it's gonna set the hot Q on beat on the exact location where the uh bar is here so uh yeah it just makes everything on beat but if you have it off you know when you press you know now it's on beat and now turn off the quantize like this these are not in beat these are not in beat I, I really I always use the quantize you know and then here's key lock So it's gonna change the pitch and here's the pitch bend and yeah and now let's talk about the BP and detect detector uh, well it's shit the it's the shittest bpm de detector i've ever seen <laughs> you know it's i i would never trust it, the bpm this detects so uh yeah yeah i just got the black i just got black out <laughs> but anyways that's what keylock does then there's auto Q, then there there's BPM tap. It's currently at lock. No. Or actually I don't know. Now you can set manually the BPM. Just like this. And now it's again locked and of course BPM tap. You can automatically tap the BPM here. And yeah, I think that's everything. I'm just gonna take a look and see if there's something I missed. Uh, nope. Now let's go to the screen. So, yeah, so the, so the, this unit material is light plastic. It it's very light. It weights not much, you know. When I lift this, you know, I can just feel the weight of the inside. So I don't know how to explain, but this is uh, cheap and light plastic. But yeah, this is pretty. Oh God, this is. This is pretty heavy, you know, even though, yeah, this is pretty heavy player. So yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot something. I forgot something. So, so, um, I forgot about the range and the BPM mode. So shift and range is, they're gonna change the range. Then it has 100% which is same as wide. So when this fader is up, it means that um, uh, the music completely stops. It, it's at zero BPM. This is like the manual, manual stop time and start time, you know. Yeah.
and BPM mode of course here is the uh, automatic so it's now automatically gonna de detect the BPM which is 100% like not 100% but I, I freaking hate this camera. This is like 10 years old camera. I, I just hate this camera because it's, you know, automatically stops recording whenever it wants. So I don't know how much I explained, but yeah, I just, I explained the range. Range. It has range from 4% 4, 4 to 100%. So yeah. Then the BPM mode, it's now automatically gonna detect the BPM, which is ninety percently. It's not accurate. It's most likely, most likely to get, and most likely to uh, detect the wrong BPM. So the basic BPM, where it starts counting the BPM, it's one thirty BPM. So it's usually gonna show that that's why i have my own bpm detector at my computer i'm gonna explain it in the, at the end of the video so yeah there is three bpm modes the automatic never use it then there's tap now when you press this tap it's gonna automatically it then it's gonna set the bpm of what you have tapped then there's manual and id3 and id3 means that it's gonna read the file you know read the file properties because uh at your computer you can set the bpm manually and it's gonna find that bpm and automatically um go to that bpm so yeah i'll explain it at the end of the video how you can detect the BPM correctly because I have an application I have a software on my laptop BPM detector which is like 90% nine, nine, always accurate it's completely free and it it downloads downloads the detected BPM to the files I don't know how to explain it but yeah when the software where I have detected the BPM of the track, it automatically marks the BPM on, on the file properties and then when you when you select this song in this unit, it's the unit is automatically gonna go to that BPM that the software has detected 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 fuck. Sorry about my English, I my mother tongue is not English. I'm from the Europe and more precisely from the Scandinavia. So yeah. Now the screen, like I was supposed to. So this is the screen. Here's the tempo percentage. Here is the BPM. Here the range. And there here is the time. You can see how much the time have been played and how much is left. And here is of course the um, the track name and while pressing shift and uh, text text it's gonna so other titles you know and yeah here's the search window here you can here you can select the track pressing this you can get back you can cycle back through the playlists and then if you wanna place if you wanna yeah if you wanna go to a folder just press this browse knob like in every single DJ unit and yeah now if you this automatically goes to the waveform view like in 10 seconds or 5 seconds but you can but if you press and hold this back button, it's automatically gonna go to this waveform view. 
So yeah. Yeah. Now let's go to the settings. So let's yes, let's press the settings. Here are all the settings. If you wanna you can pause the video if you wanna look what settings here is. I'm just, I'm just gonna go through them all. And here is the sound card. So there here you can select the sound card. Then analyze tracks. If you press off, if you if you have the analyze off, uh, I have uh, I have um, read somewhere that this player works better without the waveform analyzed. So when you let's select the track, as you can see, there's no waveform because because I turned off the analyze from the settings and now when I turn it back on if I just can find it here and now you can see the waveform and yeah I also forgot to mention that while you can search a bit faster with the platter Now let's go back to the settings. All, all, oh yeah. Oh, before that, show track info. Now you can see all the all all the info of the track, the track name. Yeah, you know. This is automatically set on when you buy this. This is automatically the setting is automatically on. And yeah, here you can save all the settings that you have set here to the, you can save them to the USB stick. And if you are on a gig and you realize that there is a Gemini player, you can just load the settings that you have. You can just load these settings on another Gemini player. Pressing this, and it's just gonna load from the USB. Yeah, here is the software version. Uh, yeah, here is the reset settings and exit the settings window. You can just press the settings settings button if you wanna close the settings window. So yeah, but of course here is the eject button. When you press it, it ejects the USB and it's safe to. Um, it's safe to um, lift the USB stick and take it off so yeah I think this is everything you need to know everything that this player has to offer I'm just gonna eject it now and now it's safe to take it off like this and of course you can turn it on and turn it off from the back right here right here so um, now let's talk about this player like more should you buy it or not well um, well first of all it depends you know should you buy this it depends where you're gonna use this? Are you are you gonna do a DJ gig with this? Because if you are, then don't do it. Don't do it. I I, I would never trust these players on a gig. And um, and yeah, I would never do it. That this says that professional media player right here, professional media player. But it's not professional. It, this this player is perfect for home use. You know. For bedroom DJs, if you are a bedroom DJ, then this is good for you. Then, then this is fine. And yeah. 
So like I said, this unit costs 400 bucks each. Uh, looks like that the memory from the memory card is running out. So I'll just turn off the camera. So I'll, you're, I'm just gonna talk to you. See ya. All right, welcome back. I'm just I'm just gonna sit down. Yeah, the Gemini player is good. You know, it's it's decent. It's not that bad that you have seen from the reviews. I think that the player is, you know, it's pretty. Uh, you know, the player is. I don't re I don't remember the world. I don't I don't remember the word. But yeah, 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 yeah. That player is underrated. That player is much better than people's people said says. And um, well, this is cheap, cheap player. So um, of course it's gonna have some issues. Th but the most important thing is that it works. And yeah, it works. But um, yeah, of course you can connect virtual DJ to that controller and you can just um, mix inside inside virtual DJ if you happen to have virtual DJ and yeah and it's it's work it works the best with virtual DJ someone have said on my comments thank you for him. But yeah, I truly like that. I truly like this unit. You know, it's not that bad. And yeah, of course, it it has some issues when I am about to beat match. It sometimes um jumps to the jumps to the other side of the track, and yeah, it has some issues. But they're not that bad, you know. And like I said. Don't use the link mode because it's 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 work it works much better without the link mode. So yeah, don't use the link mode. And um yeah what else? Um <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> I bought this player from Record Gaze Record case uh, if I uh, I don't know how I don't remember how much it costed uh, something says, says in my mind that it cost like 300 bucks each but usually it it should cost around 400 bucks and returns are accepted so don't don't worry you can always return them but now the biggest question of this whole video should you buy it um if you have yeah if you are a bedroom dj you you dj for fun you don't wanna go to any gig and you don't wanna mix to people you just wanna mix at home uh, yeah as a hobby and you want a cheap player because if DJing, DJing is your hobby and you don't you don't DJ that often you know then you shouldn't spend that much money on players so yeah I'll say that yeah that player is good you know yeah you can buy it I I, I, I recommend but if you if you have more money and you are ab and you are able to spend more, then of course spend them on Pioneer XDJ seven hundred, even though it's small, but it's way better than the Gemini because well it's Pioneer, and Pioneer is currently the the leading DJ company, been probably for twenty years now, so you can absolutely trust Pioneer on every product they sell but um this gemini player is 
it is good and if you don't want to spend more than 800 bucks for two players yeah these players are are good you know for the price range you can't get better players on that money range but except if you wanna spend more on the XDJ 700 well then of course you should buy that and yeah but this Gemini player is is good you know I was surprised how good it was because I expected less from it so um <coughs> yeah and now let's talk about the BPN detector, detector software uh, yeah, I have, I have wrote wrote it. I wrote down the uh, link. The link is in in the description, where you can download it. It's completely free and easy to use. You can inside this software. You inside this software. You just find the folder that you have the songs on, and then it just automatically automatically gonna detect the BPM. And then from the settings you can see from inside the software settings you can see that there is a setting somewhere like there's a setting that says like save to ID three or save to file properties. It's easy to find. If you need more tutorial just write down write down in the comments and I'll I'll make a short video about how to install it and uh, how to use it so yeah never trust the BPM of the unit what no matter what it says always use the BPM detector software because it's much better and it's much much faster you know and yeah I think that's everything I think I think that's everything I need to say. If you decide if you decide to buy it and then you're not happy with it, well I'm sorry that you're not happy with it, but um don't blame don't blame me because this is just my honest review. It's your own decision if you want to buy it or not. But I hope that that this video helped you on deciding whether not to buy it or to buy it and um yeah i think i don't have anything else to say i think we can end the video right here uh, if you want if you want a review video of the mixer that i have i can make it but uh the mixer i have if you want to know it's um reloop Remix 60 uh, It was made in 2015 So it's pretty old, but it's good the effects are not the best effects possible But that mixer is good, you know good for its price and it It's still avail. It's still available from the from the music stores and yeah, it costs a lot around 800 bucks or if I remember right, it costed six hundred bucks. I I I I don't remember because I have this for a year. So yeah, yeah, nothing else to say. Thank you for watching, and yeah, I hope that this video helps helped you. Yeah, see you in the next video. <laughs>
the link mode works better you know with the link mode it it has so much issues it's gonna it's more likely to crash all the time you know it it crashed many times well it still crashes but not not that often like like before but so it it actually deletes many issues if you don't have the link mode on so yeah all right and yeah one thing um the vcase software that vcase it's the software of the gemini you know every gemini dj player works with vcase and it sucks it that software sucks you you can't do anything with it you know i i tried to um set hot cues but it didn't save them and yeah it 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 just doesn't do anything it's useless you know it's useless at least so far that i know it's useless and i'm gonna delete it because yeah it's useless but yeah try the virtual dj thing try to uh play with them in in virtual dj yeah that's it